Welcome to this time with Rivers of Living Water. Today we have National International Evangelist Cruz Botello with us, who will bring a, bringing a message to us in just a few moments. Today I'd like to share with you Psalms 101 and 2. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with singing. Evangelist Cruz. Thank you. Good afternoon, evening, night. I don't know what time you're watching with this, what is it, feed or cast? Since we've gone to electronic formats, people tend to watch at all times. Sometimes they'll watch it three in the morning, sometimes they'll watch it two in the afternoon, but this scripture that I want to share with you today talks about what we can do. What can we do in a time of crisis, pandemic, fear? What is it that we can do? The Bible says this, I will, we will, we shall bless the Lord at all times. At all times. Not sometimes. Not when we feel like it. But at all times. His praise shall when? Continue. Continually be in our mouths. So today's scripture we find is in Psalms 103. And we're going to be reading from verse 1 through 5. I don't want to make this long. I want you to get this because sometimes we ponder on some things too long and we miss the point. But the reason that we are here today, whether it be in your house or in your car, wherever you may be watching, is to do what we can do for our Lord. He's already done everything for us. So today we're going to be reading, again, I said, in Psalms 103, verse 1 through 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from the destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth my mouth with good things, so that Thy youth is renewed like the eagle. So we have a benefits package. Did you know that we have a benefits package? How many of you have a job? And in that job, they give you some benefits. Did you know that our benefits package is this thick? Have you read the benefits package? Do you know what the benefits are of being a child of the Most High? The benefits include he will rebuke the devourer. He will bless you in the city and in the country. Even when it seems like it's dark. Do you know that outside today it seems like it's dark? You walked out, right, and it was gloomy, it was wet, it was cold. But did you know that on the other side of those clouds, the sun is still shining? It comes up every morning. The Bible says that his mercies are new every morning. Have we, for, have we forgotten who he is? Let us not forget who God is. Whether it be two or three, that's what the Bible says. If there are two or three are there, I am there in their midst. Maybe you feel like there's nobody there with you. Let me remind you of who's with you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This word isolation, right? We, we, we hear it a lot today. In my past, I spent some time in isolation. So that means before I got sent out, to whatever institution that the state was going to send me to, 
they would send me to the local institution, which was out here in Fremont, maybe two or three miles from here, and they would put me in isolation. Why do they put you in isolation? They put you in isolation so you can think about some things. Amen. God has put us in isolation so we can think about some things. I'm not blaming the popo. That's how we are, no? I'm not blaming the judge. I'm not blaming everybody else. What did we do? What is it that we have to reflect on? So I'm from Oregon, Ohio. That's where I was born, but I was raised here in Fremont, Ohio. So I've been walking every day. I got about two blocks the first day. Praise the Lord. Then I got about three blocks, and you know, the next day I walked all the way to rallies. I don't know if that was a praise report or not. But that was about seven blocks. And yesterday I got up and I walked around the river because I seen some people fishing. So I went down there without a pole to see the river and then I, I, I began to look at the river and the river was reminding me of this verse in Psalms 23. He leadeth me besides the what do you see in still waters? Your reflection. Why am I here on the riverbank in a year where I'm usually used to you looking at thousands of people along the riverbanks? And there was only a handful of people there. And I'm the only one who's not fishing. Because God wanted me to reflect on something. This is what God is wanting us to do. Let us examine ourselves. Amen. Do you want the benefits? I want the benefits. But where is it do I fall into the prerequisites of the benefits? Have you asked for, I just heard this a little bit ago, forgiveness. Have you asked God to seek your heart? Have you prostrated yourself and said, where am I in this picture? What is it that I have to do today in my house, in my car, wherever I'm at? Because I want to be right in the eyes of God. Salvation is a personal examination of one's heart. When you see people come to the altar, it's because God is tugging on their heart. It's, right, it's not even a mind thing. Because a mind tells you you can't do it. I've already tried to leave that life. I've already tried to leave the bar. I've already... And how did that turn out? Your mind tells you you can't do it. Right? Your mind tells you you have no power. But Jesus says, you've got all the power that you need. If you can just meet me at the cross, I will give you everything that you need. I will give you strength. I will give you wisdom. I will give you freedom. I will give you peace. I can give you healing. I can give you hope. I can change your heart. I can change your mind. But it takes something within us to say, if you're for real, then I lay it all down. And this is what's going to happen. That day, that week, that month, that year, you might be flying on that cloud. And you may be looking at the sunshine. But all of a sudden, that storm comes in. And it doesn't look like it anymore. 
It doesn't feel like it anymore. You don't feel the warmth of the sun. You feel cold and abandoned. And God says, don't worry. I'm here. He has never left us, never forsaking us. Somebody that I ran into the street here in Fremont this week told me, you know this is just a test. I was like, what? What are you talking about? This is just a test. Whatever you're going through is just a test. Have you ever heard those things on the radio? You know, I got one on my phone the other day. This is a test of the emergency broadcast system. Have you ever heard that? This is only a test. Wow. So what are you going to do when the test comes? Is the question. Are you going to rely on what God's word says? Or are you going to react on how you feel and how it looks and what they say? The Bible says that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The world wants to make it seem like it is greater. How many people have seen people with masks? You know that the mask doesn't stop the virus. <laughs> you do know that, right? But see, some people got these super masks with little charcoal filters on them and everything. Like that. You know that don't stop anything. But you believe what you've seen. Is this real? Yeah, oh, it's real. Are people dying? Oh, people are dying. I heard something. Was that the voice of God? But God, his voice is greater. The question today is this, are you ready to die? I've been working on this book for four years. Are you ready to die? I have not been able to finish this particular book. Why is it that I'm not able to finish this book? Because you're not going to be able to die even if you want to die unless God has appointed that day and that time. So if Corona is not supposed to take you, you're not going to go. What does that say? God has already made the time and the place, but he has given us an opportunity to do something on this earth while there is time. There's still time on the clock. There is still an opportunity to get up and say something. There is still a day to say, hey, repent. Yes. For the time in the day is short. And it starts with ourselves first. I repent. <laughs> I ask for forgiveness. I ask God to give me another chance. Another opportunity. Why? Because there's still a message that has to be preached. There are still ears that have to hear. There are still souls that have to be saved. We may be looking at an empty church. But that doesn't mean that we cannot populate heaven. Amen. Somewhere, somebody is still listening. Amen. Let he who has an ear to hear. You may not be able to touch the church in the physical today or meet as you were used to before, but that doesn't mean that you cannot reach out. You can reach out today and say, Lord, I'm here today. I'm lost. I'm broken. I'm afraid. I need salvation. What is the message of the Bible? Good news. I didn't come up here to talk to you about any bad news. The gospel is good news. It's hope. 
It's an expectancy. So on this day, like I said, afternoon, evening, night, whatever it may be, I want to lead you in a prayer. It would not be correct of me not to give you an opportunity to give your heart to the Lord and reflect on the word that was given today. So today, wherever you're at, if you would just bow your heads and close your eyes, we come before you, Father, and we just thank you. First of all, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, my God, that you sent your Son to this earth because the Bible says that you so loved us, that you sent your Son to die on that cross so that we may have life. We believe in the name of Jesus Christ who died and bled for our sins and was raised in three days with power and authority. Today, my God, we come before you and we lay our lives at the feet of the cross. We know that we have fallen short. We fall short every day. We come and we ask for forgiveness of our sins. And we ask you, my God, to be the Lord in our lives. That we may look unto you, my God, every waking minute, every day that we spend here on earth, my God. We give you our lives, my God, today. We make you ruler over our lives. We pray in faith believing, my God, that your word is true. And we just thank you, my God, for the opportunity to be called sons and daughters today. We give you all honor. We give you all praise in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. Amen. And amen. God bless you. I hope you were blessed this morning. If you enjoyed our message today with Evangelist Cruz, friend us on Facebook, and if you view us on YouTube, then subscribe to our channel. If you would like a prayer cloth or you would have a prayer request and you want it placed on our prayer uh, cross, please contact us by writing Post Office Box 1323, Fremont, Ohio, 43420. We look forward to hearing from you. Remember, there is no God like our God nowhere.